pardon me, girls, but may I ask you a question? Why are you chewing that particular brand of gum? That's a silly question. Why do you want to know? I'm conducting a marketing survey for an advertising agency. We're about to introduce a new chewing gum, and we'd like to know something about people's likes and dislikes. What makes them buy the gum they're now buying, for instance? Nothing very much in today's mail. Hey, this is from that soap company that sent me the samples. It looks like a questionnaire. Well, let's see what they want to know. Hmm. Well, if enough people reply to this questionnaire and say what they really think, that DNS cosmetic company should have a pretty good idea as to what people think of their soap. What did you say? You want to know what? We want to know what kind of coffee your mother uses. What kind does she buy? Hey, Mom, there's a guy on the phone that wants to know what kind of coffee we use. Why does he want to know? I don't know. I'll ask him. My mom says, why do you want to know? The reason I want to know is that we're taking a survey of the different kinds of coffee that people like. He says they're taking a survey of what kind of coffee Hey, Pete, wait up. I tried to call you a little while ago, but the line was busy. Maybe you called when that guy was talking to me about the coffee. He practically took up my whole lunch hour. Hey, he called us, too. My mom answered the phone, and she told him she never drinks coffee. I don't know why they want to telephone people, just ask them a dumb question like that. What difference does it make to them what kind of coffee we use? I don't know, but if Miss Crawford is back from lunch, let's ask her. She might know. Hey, Miss Crawford, got a couple of minutes? We got something we want to ask you. Sure, Peter. I'm finished with my lunch. This noon, some guy called, and he wanted to know what kind of coffee we used. We want to know why he should care. He was probably making a survey. You see, Peter, there are men and women whose job is just telephoning people and asking them questions about what they like and don't like, particularly what kinds of products they use. Miss Crawford, can we listen too? Of course, Diane. Gee, you're nosy. We're not nosy. We're just interested. Good. It's a very interesting subject. In fact, instead of the lesson we had planned, let's talk about it. People usually have a pretty good idea of what they want, certainly what they need. But manufacturers and advertisers need to know, too. They have to have a good idea of people's likes and dislikes, so they'll know what to make in the first place. And, very important, how to tell you about it. How to advertise it. So when they find all this out... Well, then they can come up with ideas for letting the people know about it. And they'll let people know about what the manufacturer has made? How will they do it? Well, their marketing research will give them a clue to what people like and don't like. And they'll use these clues when advertising. It works something like this. Every ad you see and hear usually starts with someone like this man. He's an advertising executive, and right now he's listening to a client. You see, Jack, we feel that this new product isn't just another breakfast sausage. It's a high-protein breakfast sausage. Our marketing surveys told us that people are very interested in having a high-protein diet. 
What we discovered agrees with this idea, Harry. Now, let me tell you what we've been doing about the advertising plan for it. After you and I first talked about the new product, some of our artists and writers got together and came up with some interesting ideas. The writers assigned to your new product and got busy. That's Mike Farentino. He's one of the best copywriters we have. <laughs> he's not sleeping. That's how he usually looks when he's dreaming up a great idea for an ad. From the sound of that typing, he must have really done some good dreaming. Once we have an idea, it goes to the art department. Take a look over his shoulder. He's working on one of the ads for your breakfast sausage right now. When he's got his drawings finished, he'll send them on to Dottie Nicolosi. She's the head of our art department. It's her job to work with the artists. So, of course, she'll check their layouts. That's what she's doing now. In fact, Harry, we have some of your advertising layouts ready to show you. As you know, Harry, since this is a brand new product, we're planning a big advertising campaign. Now, if you and Rick could just look at these and give us your reactions. That looks pretty good to me. Take a look at it, Rick. What do you think? Oh, I, I like it, Harry. I think this line of advertising should really do a good job of selling our product. Then, since we're agreed, let's go with it. So you see how it works. And in this case, as is true in most examples of advertising, the advertising agency depended quite a bit on what they'd learned about people's likes and dislikes. From things like questionnaires, telephone surveys, asking shoppers. Well, is that the bell? Well, we've spent the whole afternoon talking about advertising. I think we learned a lot, though. Well, class dismissed. Hey, hey Bill! Hey, 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 Wait till I get home. I want to tell my mom that there really was a reason for asking about the coffee. Hey, Chuck, look at that ad for candy. I never noticed that billboard before. Really take care of your cold. Just think of it. With only two tablets a day, that cold will be gone in no time at all. Miss Crawford is right. There are ads all over the place. Well, so long, Chuck. See you later. Hey, Mom, you know that guy in the coffee? Well, just wait till I tell you. You see, Miss Crawford told us all about it.